Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Homebrew the Fury. Okay, so on today's brew I'm going for a wheat beer of some sort uh, at some time. I'm not quite sure what, but uh, I put my um, stuff into Brewer's Friend and it's come up with a few different versions of the wheat beer, so I'm just going for a, a general wheat beer. Uh, my uh, recipe today is uh, 1.5 kilos of a Pilsner malt and then half a kilo, 500 grams of flaked wheat and we'll see what happens with that, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I've got 14 litres going uh, through my um, mash tuns today, you can see I've got a little orange thing there, that's my new um, light lock flexible sparge recirculation arm. Uh, I'm going to use that and try and get the water directed better into the grain bed and then I'm going to use uh, 5 grams of Tetnanga hops at 45 minutes and I'm going to use 5 grams of uh, domestic Halatau hops at 30 minutes and then I'm going to use, I'm debating the yeast here, I've got some M41 Belgian ale yeast left but I've also got a Bohemian lager yeast so uh, both mangrove jacks but I'm, I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to use yet um, but I will use the world flock and I have managed to obtain some gelatin some powdered gelatin so I'm going to use that uh, at the end of the fermentation to see if I can clear the beer uh, condition it in bottles and still keep carbonation and that will go into the um, tasting video uh, but uh, Water just coming up to the boil now, but let's have a look at um, the difference between the two grains because I've never used flake wheat before and uh, it's, it's quite a big difference really. Okay, so you can see here I've got, uh, I've actually got three pots of stuff because I don't have a bowl big enough for everything. But uh, in this one, uh, this is the half kilo of flaked wheat and if you have a look, um, you can see it's quite big grains really and um, I'm not sure how that's gonna how that really functions. You can see that the grains are split, and that you can see the white in there. Um, that just shows that's the starch in there that we're trying to get out. But you know that's flaked wheat. It's quite a bit bigger than the uh, Pilsner malt. This is a genuine Pilsner malt as well, a nice one. I've got that from uh, Malt Miller, um, and you can see that the grains are a lot smaller, and these still have the husks on. So you can see the white. You can see the white there, that's the starch that we're trying to convert, but it's still got the husks on it. So there's quite a big difference in the grains really. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how they get on. Okay, so here's the sparge arm set up. It's um, basically a modular thing. You've got all different movable uh, parts here and each has got a little jet at the bottom, a little hole at the bottom that have angled in different ways. So half of them point straight down and half of them point towards the middle. So we should get a better, um, more even recirculation of the wort. Um, I'm just waiting for my water to come up to temperature, which it's currently at 64, so I've a little bit way to go, but I need to give it a, a test. So I've got my pump hooked up and uh, I think I've got all these little jets pointing inside so they're not going to kill anything and splash water everywhere. Uh, I've got my um, valve on my pump set to half open. Uh, it might be quite large but we'll turn it on in three, two, one. <laughs> and, and there we go. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I'm well happy with that. So we can just turn that down, I think. I'll just let that. I think. We'll just get it so it's not, so it's running straight in as little few bubbles as possible. But, I don't think that's too bad at all. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pointing inwards. And then I have an another ring where they're pointing straight down. And, uh, that should be proper good. Okay, so just whilst we're waiting for that to come up to temperature, it's currently at 66, waiting for it to get to 72, 73. Uh, I've put my recipe into Brewer's Friend, and it says I've got mostly green ticks, just the colours um, not right on a couple of them. Although it does say the colour is 
uh, right for one of them. So the, the SRMs are 3.28 if you do it in the Mori style, which is bang with this because it should be 2 to 4, so that's bang on. Um, so the original gravity I'm looking for then is 1048, uh, final gravity of 1009, uh, alcohol 5.1, and IBUs of 16 ish around there. So I should get a very pale. Uh, slightly hazy beer apparently because that's what the wheat does, it puts uh, some haze into the beer. Um, so it's a bit of confusing, should be really doing uh, a fining experiment with gelatin on what should be a hazy beer? Eh, never mind. Uh, but everything's in there and um, everything's in style, just the colouring based on different methods of measuring it. Two of those are out but that's nothing. And. Uh, I think we're right on track for a right good brew day. Okay, so we're at uh, 73 degrees now, so it's time to get mashing in. And I have noticed that uh, I have minimal space there, but uh, we'll get mashing in anyway. Okay. I think I have a leak. I do have a leak. Okay. Where's my tools? Okay, so I, I have found a leak and the reason is because the water level comes above the inlet there, so I need to be careful for next time. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm not worried because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it so this gets a little bit lower down and I can take the extra in my second pot which is there, so it shouldn't be a bother. Uh, but we're all mashed in now and you know we're off for an hour's worth of Pilsner and wheat malt uh, mashing. Okay so I've got my two pots going, they're more or less balanced. Uh, I will say that this takes a lot of liquid to give it a decent flow so uh, uh, what I did was I opened it up thinking I'd get the same flow as I did with the test and the work from here just came shooting over the top so I've had to lower it down so all I'm getting is a little bit of a trickle uh, in this from here. So it's not too bad though. Um, I can still see they're pretty well balanced which is okay. Uh, my temperature in here is keeping the water at 66 really nicely with about 40 minutes to go. The level in here isn't rising too much. Um, ignore that bit there because what you need to find uh, is uh, what you need to do when you do anything new to your mashup is check it for leaks. So I've got a leak here which is because the water was too high in here and now just by moving these these uh, silicon hoses I've actually cut it and there's a little cut in it. And I'm not sure how much work I'm losing out of it but you know there's a little bit. Um, not too much to worry about I'm pretty sure but um, just make sure you you test all your hoses and all your seals before you you pour boiling wort all over the nice stainless steel stove. Okay, so we're at the end of our mash now. So what I need to do is turn off this pump that runs into the main tun there, and I'm going to make, uh, pump off as much as I can up to here, so it just goes to about low. It should be about nine, maybe ten liters, and then that's me boil kettle. And then whatever's left in here is going to be my raw ale, which is might be cast offs raw ale. Um, I'll add some hops into it. I'll add limit maybe 10 grams of uh, halatau in. I don't know. Yeah, and see how it goes. Uh, I'll cool it down um, and I'll pitch some uh, maybe some bohemian lager yeast. I think. I think that's what I'll do for both actually. And then uh, that can go under the stairs as well and see what happens with that one. But we're just about ready to switch that pump off, so we need to switch off the far pump. Uh, so that's now stopped. The liquid is still coming through here, and then we need to stop the pump when it gets up to the top there. Okay, so we've got just a little bit less than I thought there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some out and then just to fill it up a little bit otherwise I'm going to get 8 litres which isn't what I want, I want 9 litres at the end. So I just need a little bit more out of here, top it to there and then we'll get it set on the boil.
Okay, so it's just come to a boil now. Uh, I've got 10 grams of tetanang and that's 45 minutes. I'm only boiling for 45 minutes. In that goes. And uh, then we're going to put 10 grams of halatau in at 15 minutes with the world lock shortly after. And then we'll get a cool down and uh, to pitch in temperature. Okay, so here is my raw rail, what's left of it. There's about two and a bit litres in there, which isn't too bad. Uh, I'm not worried too worried about uh, that massive amount of headspace in here because it needs oxygen anyway and there's plenty, there's going to be plenty of it. It'll start bubbling away, no bother. Maybe after a couple of days. It's usually a bit slower to get start the raw rails. Um, but like I say, uh, I'll check on this in two weeks for its um, final gravity. Starting gravity or pre-boil gravity of all that stuff is 1036, which I'm not sure is too bad. I'm looking for 1048 or 1049. And hopefully this will get down to 1006 and that'll give me four and a half percent ish. And um, it's going to be fermenting at about 18 degrees up near the gas boiler where it's a bit warmer. And uh, we should hopefully get a nice skunky flavour free beer. For nothing, really. This is my cast offs. Brilliant. Okay, so we're 15 minutes left in the boil now. There's my 10 grams of halatau. They're going in. And yes, I have just realised I didn't put them in a hot bag. So they're all going to be nasties at the bottom of the pan. But uh, it looks like I'm getting a bit more wort out of this batch. I think a 45 minute boil might be just good enough for me. And I should be able to fill those two demijohns up pretty much to where I want it to. So all I've got to do now is put in some wheel flock in another couple of minutes and then stick her in that there pan and uh, sink over there and get a cool down to pitching temperature and I'm going to use uh, the Bohemian M84 lager yeast because I'm going to ferment it cool at the bottom of the uh, on the floor under the stairs at that there brewery and it's about 12 degrees down there so uh, that's what I'm going to use okay so I'm on to the cool down stage now uh, one good thing is that I am a pan less this brew day from this brew day forth there shall only be two pans involved and the reason is because I've taken that out of the ball valve uh, at the bottom of the pan and so now it fits nicely into me into my sink to cool it down. Uh, I've already dropped 20 degrees in a couple of minutes because the surface area on these pots is quite large and I'm, my thinking is if I can get the surface area of this pot cold uh, the wort inside it, I'll give it a spin as well, will cool down quickly as well. The surface area of this is equivalent to over 25 feet of copper pipe. So if you've got a, a, um, a work chiller, uh, you might just consider just uh, cooling down your pan first because there's a, there's a hell of a lot of surface area there that you can cool and it'll get the work down to nice and cool nice and quickly. And it's never failed me yet. I can see it moving down as we speak. But uh, another thing is, well, I've got about seven and a half litres here, so I'm going to... And the reason is because I don't have a big enough pot to boil the 12 litres of work that I get off. If I've got 12 litres of work, then I would be able to um, get it down to 10 litres with the boil, and that would be a happy days then, because it would be two demijohns full. But as it is, at the minute, taking two and a bit litres of raw rail, and then whatever's left in here, it must be about 9 litres or some just under 9 litres, because... Um, I'm not getting two full demijohns worth here, nowhere near. So I might have to consider as a New Year or Christmas present for me to uh, get a, a, maybe a 15 litre pot or a 20 litre pot um, and see how it goes from there. More old drilling, brilliant. Okay, so that's it all demijohned up. I've taken a gravity reading, it's 1040, which is eight points down on what it should be according to Brewer's Friend recipe. Don't know why. I'm a rubbish brewer, that's probably the reason. Um, but <coughs> I've got seven litres there, and three and a half ish in each, more or less. I've got a third of a pack of uh, M84 Bohemian Lager Lease, and that yeast that's going under stairs in that there brewery on the floor where it's about 12 degrees or so, so that's perfect for it. And I'll pick it up, have a look at it at uh, 30th of December. And um, what I will say is that seven litres. Uh, isn't right. I might have to invest in a bigger pot because uh, I need to get all the work in one place. I can't be doing raw ales. A, it takes up another demijohn, and uh, B, 
I want to get these two fuller one, full up here like this, proper good. Um, so you can see it's hazy, which is because it's a wheat beer apparently, and it's probably got half a ton of hops in it as well. Uh, but that's it for this brew day. That's a Belgian wit beer, which uh, is Twinkles Audition, because <laughs> I went for an audition uh, for an 80s electronica band, you know, Human League and uh, a bit of Spandau Ballet and Visage and all that sort of nonsense. And so I went for that audition this week, that's why it's called Audition. Uh, Belgian wit beer, Twinkles Audition, and that's it done for this brew day. So, as usual, you can like and you can subscribe. And uh, please leave a comment, you know, I'll, I'm more than happy to get back to you. And uh, go out and brew something wheaty.